हेलो स्टूडेंट्स आई एम डॉक्टर अर्चना सिंह आई एम अ साइंटिस्ट हियर एंड आई वर्क ऑन अ पिगमेंटेशन डिसऑर्डर कॉल्ड विजिलाइगो वेयर इन सम पीपल लूज देयर पिगमेंटेशन ऑन द स्किन दिस इज अ नॉर्मल स्किन ऑफ अ विटिलिगो पेशेंट एंड हियर द मेलेनोसाइट्स द मेलेनिन कंटेंट इज एक्चुअली नॉर्मल इन द नॉर्मल अपीयरिंग स्किन हाउएवर इफ यू लुक एट देयर विटिलिगो स्किन You absolutely see zero melanin content in them. So this is what we are trying to understand. Once the melanocytes are lost from these patients' body, what really happens to the other cells? This is called a compound microscope, which is nothing but a kind of a light microscope. So the source of illumination there is light, and you usually, I am sure, you must have visualized uh, visualized samples like. a uh, root tip or a uh, cheek cells on that and you must have seen the cell boundaries very much clear you can also see the nucleus and uh, i'm sure uh, you must have seen these kind of samples in your laboratory you see this uh, image what you see here is a typical golgi apparatus you can see the cistern is stacked and these small things are the mitochondria and let me just show you some more pictures this one so this is a typical mitochondria that you can see so you have the outer membrane you have the inner membrane and now these are the cristae of the mitochondria while still retaining the clarity uh, for example if you look at any of your images that you take in the camera a camera for phone so it, when you try to enlarge it or magnify it what you see is that the picture gets starts to get pixelated or you lose the clarity so here it magnifies to a really large extent but it still does not give you that pixelation or the blurred images so the clarity is absolutely maintained the typical magnification first i talk about the magnification the typical magnification that you see under a uh, light microscope or a compound microscope as you call it is 10x 28x and 48x objective lenses the most of the microscopes provide you these three objectives so and there are uh, some uh, microscopes which can go even up to 100x using oil this one actually gives you up to 7 lakh x magnification 700000 times the original size the x here is only 5000 so even at a very small magnification in terms of time i'm talking it's a small magnification you can see that even at 5000 x you are able to see each and every crystal uh, of the mitochondria beautifully so you don't really need 7 lakh x for everything For very very small objects, like for example, by this is we may need to go up to seven x. But for most of the routine cell biology stuff that we see, the cells, or the mitochondria, or the cell cells, they all can be visualized at less than five x. But it is not just the magnification. As I told you, you know you can just keep on going uh, magnifying your images, but that is of no use. Still, you are still able to retain the clarity or the resolution. Okay, here the resolution curve is actually 0.2 nanometer. That means the same two objects, even if they are only 0.2 nanometer apart, this system can still tell you that yes, they are actually two points and not one. So, in terms of resolution or clarity, the compound microscope gives you 200 nanometer. Here it is 0.2 nanometer. these different circles these are 3 mm circles this is equivalent of a slide this grid on which we keep the sample now goes on this grid holder okay and if you see it very carefully you will see a very small tiny hole which is exactly 3 mm which fits this grid onto this and once you place your grid which now contains your sample This goes straight into this place, and this goes all the way down into this, and 
and you can what you can actually see after inserting it is just this the entire rod goes inside so basically it goes somewhere in the middle of this and this is the long tube that you see is the path of the electrons so this is a long uh, column that you see and at the top of it just like in compound microscope you have light as the source of illumination here the electrons are the source of illumination and they are at the very top so there is a source which emits electron the column is very very special in the sense it has no air it is a high vacuum column because the energy otherwise the energy of the electrons will get dissipated electrons travel best in vacuum okay so this is a long column because also because it needs a long time or a travel time to get accelerated and in this system we can have tungsten as a source so as soon as it passes the sample the electrons are transmitted through the sample that means it enters and then comes out and they do the name transmission electron microscope so the electrons are moving and finally bombard your samples and the images form here what you see here is a fluorescent screen but these days we really don't use the screen per se we directly transfer the images of the digital media this is a skin sample a human skin sample and what you see is two cells here now how do you know these are two cells because you can see one nucleus here this in a gray line and the other one is here so these are two cells and what you see in between please don't confuse this as the nucleus this is the nucleolus okay so nucleolus followed by nucleus and then what you see here is actually the cytoplasm and skin as most of you would be aware of contains a lot of pigment the melanin pigment which you see as this black pigmented electron dense granules so this is what gives our skin the characteristic color